right, so, well, um, I appreciate you guys coming and being a part of this. I, I haven't done a seminar, it's been about a year or so. I, I stopped doing my went you know, to school and whatnot, but uh, I used to do quite a bit. You know, I've done as far away as China and Japan and, and Australia. And, uh, it's, 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 I would have never thought I'd be doing one here, but it makes the most sense to me because I've, I've learned a lot. And, you know, I don't need to tell you my pedigree, but I've done seminars with guys like Charles Holoquin, uh, which is like my hero. He's my almost, he passed away recently. Um, so one of the things that uh, anyone that, that's really trained with me, especially with squat, is it's a very complex movement that, that you know, a lot of people are very uncomfortable with, and that leads to injuries. But people try to force it, and when I look at look out the gym, uh, ninety percent of people are squatting incorrectly. You know, so we're going to kind of go over the the form and, and technique here. Uh, one of the big things is uh, we'll go over warm up uh, in, a, in a second. Uh, but what, what we're trying to achieve is when when you see like a lot of bodybuilders work out, the, the mentality is usually trying to isolate and then they try to bring the squat into that movement and you see a lot of narrow stance squatting and then you see like us you know essentially trying to mimic a bodybuilder type movement where they're trying to isolate their quads or their glutes they're really generally not trying to squatting for their hamstrings they're trying to you know overload their quads because that's this big show me muscle right you know uh, so what you see is bad form bad, bad technique that, that's carried over from bodybuilding that's not bad form for them, you know, it's uh, the general public, right? So what we're gonna look for today is trying to get everybody an understanding of, of the proper technique and the proper stance, where the bar placement is. Because if I look around the room, you know, we're, we're all fairly similar build as far as the length of our leg and length of our arms. I don't see anyone here that's got like really short arms. Yeah, he's bigger. Sure, kind of shorter arm, but, but Matt doesn't have very short legs. I've seen six foot five guys that have very short legs, and, and the way they squat can be a little bit different than someone that has very long legs. You know, women generally have short torso, very long legs, and we'll talk about that. That has a big carryover to deadlift. Uh, but generally, what you see in the gym is uh, when people squat, they're usually shoulder width stance or narrower. And if you watch, their knees are going over their toes. You see a lot of this stuff, and then you see this, and you'll see their heels start to raise. Right? And what they're trying to do is, they're trying to rotate their body around their knees. Right? So they're trying to squat down and dropping from knees. You see this one? What I'm going to show you, and the goal is to show you how to take, you don't have to mess with your stance, but how to move it into this position. So you see the difference? Right? So here, I'm squatting from the hips. What a lot, most people do is they squat from the knees. See the difference? Knees, yeah. hips, right? So. Squatting from the knees is kind of like benching from the elbows, right? If you bench from the elbows, what are you doing? You're doing a close curve bench, right? And how weak is that? How much does that really put a huge strain on your, on your wrists and your elbows, right? Versus if you open up the stance a little bit, move your grip a little bit, and you're squatting from the chest, it's a much different movement. You know, and, and you're isolating the chest versus isolating the triceps, right? And less chance of injury. Does that make sense? So far? Okay. So next thing is bar placement. We're going to discuss where the bar placement is because that's going to be that's going to correlate to where your stance is. They, they're synergistic, right? If I'm squatting fairly narrow stance, which we're going to talk about narrow stance, wide stance, uh, but if I'm doing a narrow stance, in order to make sure that, that, that the, the bar path is correct and not going too far on my toes or, or throw me back, I need to have a higher bar placement. If I'm a wider stance squatter, what's going to happen? Is I'm by by nature, I'm not leaning forward. I'm pushing my hips back. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time talking about this squat technique because this is the extreme. This is the right way to squat technically for most people here, but it's the extreme. It's a hard. It's going to be the hardest for everybody to learn because it just it's this look. This looks and feels unnatural for most people. This is where you're going to generate the most amount of force. And the, the most comfort you can see, I'm very comfortable here, but when I go the other way, it hurts my knees. This doesn't hurt my knees at all. But what happens here is I'm pushing my hips back. People think, oh, well, you're leaning forward. No, I'm pushing my hips back. So as I push my hips back, 
you're going to see my chest is going to, going to go in an incline or decline position, however you want to look at it. You know? But what that means, if, if the bar is high, on my, high up on my shoulders, it's going to go over my knees and it's going to push me forward. So it's going to, it's going to facilitate a very low bar placement. So just keep that in mind. Because we're going to talk about bar placement and foot placement, and those are going to be not mutually exclusive. They work, they work together. <clears throat> so now before we even talk about this, injury prevention is such that I've torn both my quads. So the most important thing that, that we can do, we're, we're, gonna, we're not using much weight here today, but warming up is, is super important. I find that if I spend a minimum 10 minutes warming up, then I, I'm good to go. And I, like the best thing is I see a lot of young guys and girls at the gym that just do like this these insane, weird warm-ups. I, the the, the warm-up should be the position of function that you're, you're working. If we're talking about squat, this is the second, well, how does I look at it between squat and deadlift? Deadlift can be more dangerous mechanically for your body. I don't know about you, but squat can kill you, right? Like when I walk out at 800 pound squat, it's really dangerous. Like, I mean, I, I'm putting my, like, I can die. You saw that kid that recently just, just snapped his neck in, in Japan, like with 400 pounds. So I don't joke around, and, and that was half a couple weeks ago when Mace was up. Like, my train partner is laughing. Uh -uh. No, when I'm starting to hit about 600, 700 pounds, no, it's, it's, it, this is a very dangerous movement. So the more reps I get in with light weight, the better. You know? So, meaning my warm up isn't going to be like all this crazy hip stuff. No, no I'm going to use a position of function, which is this. Right, I'm gonna squat this way, so I'm gonna warm up this way, right? So I'm gonna get my reps in, this is my warm up, you know, just a bunch of body weight stuff. I can lay on the floor and, and stretch. We're talking about warming up and stretching, two different things. I'm a fan of stretching after my training. You know, I don't wanna stretch before. That's completely different than, you know, what normal, what, what people generally like to do. I don't wanna warm up, I don't wanna stretch the muscle before I train it, completely different. And if you talk to guys that like boxers, they're, you know, they're the opposite. They'll stretch a muscle before they before they before they box, but they won't, you know, warm up the muscle much. They won't do like much reps and stuff because they want the muscle to be very limber. So the goal is, you know, first doing no, you know, just body weight. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the bar. And first, I have a hard time. You see, getting my shoulders back. What I'm gonna try to do is keep the bar high. And same thing. So it's empty bar. Then I'll, I'll add it into the bar. But this is the movement. Now. Going from the warm up uh, into the position, the, the, the functional position of the squat, I want you to look at my knees and my hips and think about what, what I'm doing and, and maybe how that relates to what you're doing, right? Because it's a, it's a everyone that, that I know that squats incorrectly squats from the knees. You see this all the time, right? What I'm doing is I'm coming back with my hips and you'll see, look where my knees are. You see where they're not over my toes. Most importantly, how comfortable am I down here? It's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. Does anyone know why that position is, is so comfortable? This, I mean, where, where, general, where generally are, do you guys feel like you're the weakest in the squat? The hole? The bottom or the top? Mid, mid, top, top, top. Right here, probably top. Well, you squat pretty decent, right? Squat bone. But a lot of people are, are really they have a hard time on the bottom. They have a hard time getting depth in the bottom of the lift. Top of the lift, I can see that too. Especially if you're very quad dominant, so you just don't want to want to contract. What we see is because we all sit in a car a lot, we sit at desks a lot, right? What ends up happening is the hamstring gets tight, and a tight hamstring is, is a very weak hamstring. So the, the squat trains the quads, the glutes, and the hamstrings. But of those three muscles, can anyone take a guess what the strongest is? The glute, by far, right? The glute is the most powerful muscle in people's body. What's number two? It depends, but generally the hamstring the hamstring should be. The hamstring is the leg bicep. 
So because, and the, the reason why it's so strong is mechanical advantage, right? And that's important. It's pulling on the inside of a joint. The quad's pulling on the outside of a, of a joint, right? So there's a slight mechanical advantage. So when we're squatting, we want to make sure we're putting the, the glutes and the hamstrings in the best position of function. The quad is like the, the, the tricep. We don't, you know, when we're benching, we want to make sure that we're putting the, the tricep in a position where it's functional, but we don't want to overload it, right? It's, it's kind of the weakest link. The quad's the same thing. I know that like two torn quads. If you, if you put, if you squat with too much quad dominance, you're going to tear a quad. I mean, that's going to be your limiting factor, you know, so amongst other things. So the goal is going to be a, a stance, and I will just break it down right to the main part of the movement. We want a stance that's shoulder width apart or wider. Everybody here should be squatting at least shoulder width stance. The next thing is, we're going to go into the cue. So the next thing is, you know, forget about bar placement, right? We'll, we'll do that uh, later. But the cue is shoulder width stance or wider. Then it's going to be, when I break at my knees, right? I'm pushing my hips back. So if everyone stands up, what I would ask is when you're, when you're, when you're, if you if you do the movement, except careful now, I have all those issues. But when you when, when, if you if you initiate this the squat, right? What you should do, what you should notice is, notice what your chest is doing. Your chest should start to face the ground, right? Because I need to be rotating around the hips, not around the knees. There you go. You, you want that chest to start to face down towards the ground. And if you just go down a couple inches, you should feel comfortable. Perfect example of, of what of quad dominance is, if you watch what Rebecca is doing, her knees are, are, are going forward, right? It's a very difficult movement if you spend your entire life doing it, because we think we always, oh, I don't want to bend over. I, I, I got to bend at the knees. But we're, we're over relying on bending at the knees. So if everyone gets in that position again, Look around it because you, you can think it, but look and see what everyone else is doing because that's how monkey see monkey do. We, we can we can kind of start to feel it. So you can go a little bit, a little bit yeah, wider. Like you got to go yeah, no wider. You go wider. Let's not go too deep either. From here, we want to try to keep your 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 uh, your legs from moving forward at all. Just come down this 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 far. That's it. Okay. No, no, no deeper than that. Very good. Everyone looks pretty good. But now look at, like, John, your knees, how they want to come forward, right? It's because the quad wants to, Rebecca's knees wants to, wants to come forward. Everyone else is pretty good. So now how we fix that is if your knees are coming forward, look, this is the difference. What we do is you, you take your hips and you just push them back. See the difference? It feels like you're leaning, like you're leaning forward. You're not. You're pushing hips back. You guys feel that? There we go. Yeah, it feels We want, we want to pretend like our, our lower leg is in is in cement. And now tell me, are you, are you, your hamstrings starting to get on fire? Yeah. yeah. Keep doing it. That's the leg workouts. My legs are killing me. Yeah. Well, the guy that I train with usually throws up every week, and we do legs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's 15 years younger. Than me. The goal is when you train these muscles, they are huge fucking muscles. What makes someone throw up isn't because we're it's hard. It's because it's all of goose. Goose. <laughs> yes. it's, it's like getting in a car accident, right? So if you do it correctly, quads, soft, right? They're not the same. Hamstrings are tight. That's what we want. And then now we're going to get into the, 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 the trick of the movement, right? The goal is the knee is a non-articulate joint, right? Just like the elbow. It's non-articulate. We're gonna have to prevent it from articulating or force it into a positive articulation, which means that if you look at my feet, everyone kind of get down to this. I know it's a little hard, just trust me. Get down to this a little bit. Look what your knees are doing. Now keep your hips pushed back. Try to keep this lower like perpendicular to the floor. What's happening is for many of you guys, you'll see this, right? That's because your quads are trying to contract. What we need to do is, if you feel like your quads are gonna start to get out, a little bit on fire, push them out. Push the quads out as hard, almost as hard as you can. Look at where the captain is, right? That's what you want to do. You want to get your knees over your feet. It should feel somewhat uncomfortable. You should feel a little bit of pain. That's what we're doing. We're causing a little bit of positive articulation. Just like a, dead, a, a venture, you'll see the big 700-pound ventures. They'll twist the bar. What they're doing is they're just creating a bunch of 
of, of, of tension in the elbow. But from this position you, here, you can see, I'm, I've been saying this for five minutes, it, I'm strong, I'm comfortable, I'm creating all this tension across my lower body. Now I'm squatting. If you look, you see my, my knee is not going forward almost at all. And I'm very comfortable. And then as I get down to this bottom position, keep your hands forward. So for John, what you want to do is you want to actually want to raise your hips a little bit. Don't worry about the depth, but you want to feel in your hamstrings. There you go. That's exactly it, Rebecca. So the goal is to keep that knee and that lower leg as perpendicular to the floor as possible. There you go. We don't really care about the depth. Forget about this ass to grass bullshit that people put. The, the form has to come first, and then we worry about the depth. But this is the position we want to be in. This is no way, you know, and it's 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 a it's a it's a very it's it, it's a hard movement. Once you get comfortable with it, it it feels natural. The perfect example is uh, Mason. You you what you opened up your stance a yeah. ton yeah. over the last couple of weeks, and it was super weak initially. I was uh, doing like two plates in the beginning for maybe ten, and now I could do four or five for like four to five comfortably. So a lot of people give up on this because they think it's well, it's wrong. I didn't I didn't just happen upon squatting wide stance low bar because you know I'm smart. I quite the opposite. I'm stupid. I tore both my quads. And I don't want to keep tearing my quads. So I had to find a way to prevent my quads from tearing. Right when I'm not doing a heavy squat, I'm overloading them. So that's when I realized, oh well, if I do a wide stance low bar squat. It puts me in a very powerful position. So uh, I'll show you. Uh, now we'll do a little some. If you guys want to, you can set up a bar on that one. If you guys need to work through some lightish squats, if you want. How's that? Lightish squats. It's not that bullshit. You, you, it, the, the thing is, Let's get the technique towards and then then get the range of motion. It's like a race car driver. That's that's trying to make the tree. Then we use the whole entire concept. No, no, no. You said the form needed to be right before the form. So, because I'm assuming if you're trying to get from there to there, you're going to give up on form. Get the depth. Yeah, you're gonna do either start, start or trying to go destroy the form just to get that extra. That's well, and, and so just to doing? give you an, an idea, the if you're doing a wider stance squat, the once your hip starts going below the knee, the hamstring shuts off. Because what ends up happening is now, when, when once your knee starts going above your above your hip crease, what happens is now that the hamstring is now negative. It's it's it, it, it's right. it's like curling and then bringing the weight all the way up and then boom. Well, yeah, I mean. Now I have to flex my tricep to get it out, right? Yeah. That puts a huge stress on the knee, right? Because if I squat wide stance like this, watch what happens. Once my hamstring lets go, remember when I talk about pushing your knees up? We're pushing your knees up because it turns your glutes and your hamstrings on. But once my hamstring says, bye bye, what's going to happen? My knees are going to come in. It's just, it's, it's physics, right? Because there's nothing, well, very little helping, helping keep them alive, right? So what that looks like is this. So once I come here, now the only way to get even deeper, and you'll see my, my, my knees will come in that much, because they just won't. But you'll see what's happening is my knees are coming forward. I can get the depth, but I would rather see a bottom position here. Right? See the difference? Here I'm keeping my hamstrings, my glutes completely contracted, versus here. Now you can get there by, by squatting a little narrower. Right? That's just a completely different squat. So I'll face Tom um, so you can kind of see the. At right? Yeah. I try to put that way. But it's like weak. I try to walk in the squat. Right here. A couple fingers. So now, bar placement, if you're doing a shoulder width stance or a wider squat, it's going to have to be on the middle of that trap. So it's not sitting on top of the trap, it's sitting at the thickest part of the trap. Yeah. So here's shoulder width, right? I'm using one step out, and my toes are in a position of, I don't want to say function, they're in an athletic position, right? So it would be a position if I was a football player, I can, I can turn if I had to, right, and move, right? Whereas I'm here, 
perfectly straight, I would have a hard time. It just feels weird. So I'm keeping my toes at like in an athletic position. So the same position if I was going to try jumping. Now, movement is initiated from my hips, not my knees. So my hips start in the back first. See the difference? Versus here. Yeah. That's what that's what you were doing when you were squatting, right? And that's very common, right? But now look at the difference. Does that look stronger? It should. And where am I the strongest? Here. Yeah. Very strong. Where am I the weakest though now? Yeah. Top. So, and the reason I'm going to be weaker up here is because boots can help very little on the disposition at, at the lockout. That's where the quads come in. So, once we're working through some weight, you're going to think the cue is once I get the bar, go on the back, my feet, shoulder width or wider. I'm going to initiate movement from the hips, hips back. Now I'm going to push the knees out. See, almost like I'm through building my toes here. Remember the old, the old uh, uh, Paula's, you know, the hydraulics, right? I'm almost three wheeling. When I'm doing that, what I do is keeping the weight on the balls of my foot, not the heels, but the outside balls. And I squat down, keeping my knees pushed out, and not allowing them to come in. Knees pushed out, hit the hole, push up. And if I do it correctly, it's a fairly easy movement. But why? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little more difficult. It's a little more difficult. You don't want to try with the. How do you not that I'm going to be doing this anytime soon? Yeah. Squat 7,800 pounds. How do you hold the bar then? Well, so the heavier you. So it almost feels like. I know you've got fingers on, you're not playing. You're playing you know, that shit. It's like. Uh, how do you hold that low versus in the crux, really where it can sit? Well, if you see there's. there's and there's also almost hold it up. There, I feel like you. Not that you're going to go back physically. But then your hands go almost. Well, if you, if you look when Nick's squatting, look where it look. Does the bar look like it's going to fall off his back? I don't feel very secure at all. Up here is where it's going to look about the yeah. you wing. Don't wing, you don't want to wing. Don't wing. Really but when you're using a, a, a ton of weight, what ends up happening is when you're in the top position, you know, we're talking you know, fracture large percentages of, of a ton. It's the, actually part of the body hurts the worst. Is, uh, is the elbow joint because it's pushing so far down, it's pushing like this position here, it's not going anywhere, but it's it's literally sitting on the top of the trap. I mean, on the middle of the trap, it's pushing down. But that's why you'll see big, you know, if you see like a big squat and you walk out, you're just going to rotate, which is not necessarily good form. <laughs> but once you get out, and once you push hips back, it's a difference. Now I'm, I'm back in line. And it, it's a it's a completely different movement than a high bar squat, which we'll we'll talk about. So now the, the other variation that we'll we'll do before we get to deadlift is uh, so the high bar squat is completely different. Obviously, uh, that's more of like an Olympic movement. Uh, so what the high bar is if I'm doing a a narrow narrower stance squat. I'm still going to try to keep my hips back. I'm still going to try and you know, uh, prevent my knees from going over my toes. This is why you see people with an elevated heel. The goal is, it's, it's pretty good to see it's, I'm not a, a narrow stance squatter. So the goal is this. <laughs> you can't look at that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not. Uh, well, that's the way I always squat. But the goal is, with a, a Olympic stance squat is an inside shoulder movement, which I'm barely, but it's a very quad dominant movement where your upper body should be fairly upright. Um, I'd say that's probably my comfort zone. Yeah, it's a very quad dominant movement that's very good if you're training cleans, you know, snatches, push jerks, push presses, because it's a very similar movement pattern, but um, it, it's very quad dominant. And very, uh, there's not like the instability of it. I feel like I feel like the more narrow I get, like I hate one leg. Like, well, if you have squats, it. It. more narrow, yeah, it's just not as it'd be quads probably do it's not as stable. Like, it, well, if you have the, more the, if you have Olympic shoes, I have heels on my, my on my shoes, it helps 
feels hot. Uh, but it's, it's what I'm going to talk about with the deadlift. Because uh, my squat and deadlift are, they, they work together. You know, that's the whole goal is uh, the accessory for a squat is deadlift, deadlift, the accessory for deadlift is squat. We'll move on to that. Um, so the big thing with this is um, getting the reps in um, where you're comfortable not going too deep if, if it bothers you. Uh, also understanding how the body works. You know? Like if my knees are hurting, then I have to reevaluate some videotaping and stuff because that's where it's, it's key. Does anyone have, so this, with the squat we covered quite a, quite a bit. You guys have any questions before we move on to deadlift? So, you know, we have the, the different variations. The f I'm going to talk a little bit about a similar deadlift when we talk about deadlift, which is a very good way to mimic the, the wide stance, low bar squat. They're very similar movements. Um, I'm going to call the similar deadlift a similar deadlift. It's technically in my book, it's a squat. It's not similar to deadlift at all, really. It's very much a squat movement. And we'll discuss that in a second. But, um, Good. Well, I saved the best for last because deadlift is, uh, for me, uh, the well, best movement there is. Okay? Because it's, if you want to build functional strength, uh, you want to burn calories, you want to get stronger and get healthy. It's a, the deadlift for me is that this is, this is not, I want to nail deadlift that much. So it's going to be a complete departure from the squat because if you're if, if you were squatting wide stance and you felt comfortable, you would think that you would be a wide stance deadlifter. Right? If you have long feet, right, you have you know, long levers, you would think, well, I'm going to deadlift sigma. No, not at all. Right? If you have a long femur, what we want to do is we want to take advantage of those long levers, and you're going to probably want to deadlift inside the shoulder. So my, my, I pulled 970 from here, from the floor. If we had a weight it. But it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all, it's all leverages. Now, now I want to, I'm 6'1". I'm not, I'm not sure. Watch how little the bar travels. You do it correctly, the range of motion. But now watch how much my body moves, right? It looked like the bar was really moving a whole, whole bunch. I mean, the, the, the bar is far off the ground now, but it, it seems, does it look like I'm cheating? Does that look like a movement that rates more backs? <laughs> does, that, does that look like a dangerous movement? What the goal is to get yourself in a position where all the leverages work together. Can you, can you pick out something that looked just strange, odd? Right. That. What yeah. person saw? You dropped the finger in, sorry. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the thing. You were all so short the whole time with your tips, and then it was six to seven, eight. But. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I, A, I, I, I always would use open hand. I do it for chin ups, and, and that's part of decreasing the range of motion. People say, well, if I'm deadlifting for functional strength, yeah, but. I'm deadlifting 300 pounds, you know, or 400 pounds if you use the same effort. What, what 400 pounds is going to have a, I have a better training effect, right? The idea is I'm using more muscle. I don't want the limiting factor to be, you know, I'm, I'm like that's what I'm saying about squat. Like, I don't really care so much about the, the range of motion. It's the movement, right? So with deadlift, no one's saying, oh, well, you're cheating because your hand's open. It's harder to deadlift with your hand open. You know, I suggest you guys to try it. You know, but if you teach yourself how to do it, it has a bunch of carryover to everything else, and you end up getting a stupid strong grip. But it's all part of this philosophy that I have with deadlift, which is uh, I want to take advantage of every level possible. So if we if we think about the squat, in the bottom of the movement, I'm trying to get my knee and my hip to be in line, right? I want them to be parallel to the ground. Look at my hip when I'm doing the deadlift. How far away from parallel am I? Pretty, pretty far. Where, where, where am I making up that leverage? Right? If you look at my back, what's my back doing? My, my back is almost parallel to the ground. Right? 
Is that, you think that's good? Is that, is, is that seem like it would be functionally strong? It's not. But why, why am I doing it? Uh, I'm trying to answer is there's isometric, eccentric, isometric, eccentric, concentric muscle contractions, right? So there's contract against the weight, holding the weight, and negative, right? Uh, an isometric muscle contraction, so just holding, I'd be able to hold about 30% more weight than I can lift, right? So what I'm trying to do is get my back at, a, at its mass, maximum isometric muscle contraction. Right? So all I need to do is hold the weight. Hold, right? What's that, what's that movie? Hold, what, uh, oh, what we're gonna, 300. Yeah. Just trying to hold until I get in a position where I'm, I'm not powerful. So look at my back, don't, don't look at anything else, just look what my back's doing, right? So this is an isometric contraction, right? My back's not, I'm not pulling against weight, I'm just holding it, right? Until the position, look, still holding it. So now, just because my, my, my lower body's pushed the weight away, I'm in a pretty good position now here, but I'm not gonna pull it up. Instead, I'm gonna push my hips into the bar. I'm gonna fuck the bar, right? That's it. Push my hips, people won't understand that. I'm literally, right? So I'm, I'm a triangle, I'm dividing and conquering. I'm, I'm not pulling up, so I'm never pulling up. It's always an isometric muscle contraction when I go back. So a max deadlift is predicated by how much weight I can hold here, right? So if you look, I'm never pulling against the bar. Instead, if you think about sword and stone, I'm pushing away. And once I get here, I'm pushing forward. It's a double push, never a pull. So, you always do over here, you look in the old. I'll over under if, depends on if I'm like training now where I'm just trying to keep myself healthy, pull some heavy weight, whatever. I'm not really going over under because it twists with that side. I already have a bad back, so, and I, already, I have a torn right bicep, so if I attach the right bicep, so if I put my right hand under, I'm very uncomfortable, very weak. And I'm only, I only have one point in the surgery, I only have one tendon. So if I if I rotate, what happens is you can't go over under. Listen, if you if this I don't know, it's all my head. I have to go over under. Yeah, I, my left hand has to be the one that goes under. I'm comfortable, but man, it, it just it scares me because I, I twist my whole body that way. I mean, it's I'm not going to lose the grip this way. I mean, you see my hands are still open. My pinky's hardly not far. You know, I just find. That if I'm training for you know, an effect like trying to lose weight or get in shape, I'm better off using here, even if I use straps. But my hands aren't like this, right? So if you look, if I open them up, watch how, how much I'm able to get my hips up even more. That's position here. Push, right? So now we're going to talk about, we talk about the back, how it pulls the weight. How do we initiate that push? We do so by making sure that we go down in position so we're able to uh, get set up correctly. Just like a sprinter, that's when a sprinter, you ever see a sprinter get to the box? They don't just stay in the box. They're like, I used to run track, I don't know if I sit on the box, but they would, they would like, you know, do this like whole thing, fine, this foot's on the box yet, yeah. they get back, you know, right? And then they get their butt back, and this is the position here. They get one hand, right? So they're getting in a position where they're recoiled perfectly. So when they start, their literally right hand or dominant hand comes forward as they're, and, and as they're driving against, they're throwing their hand forward to carry them that extra inch. Because that's how you look when the race is an inch here, it's a foot there, drag racing, right? You know, tenth of a second here is a second on the back end. Right? So the goal is. <laughs> when I go down, I have to go down in a position that's getting me set up. I, if I just go, right, like, does that, and I just pull, right? Be, I, I'm setting myself up for failure, right? I, I have to go down in a position to get my hamstrings tight, my glutes set up, and my hips high, and my back flat. So it looks like this. You see, I'm usually pulling my pants, because what happens when I go down, I don't want anything pulling me in that position. So Tap, tap, lift. I can do it with my eyes closed. Every single time, 
I'm always going to be the same distance from the bar. That's why I always wear long pants. Big, those Adidas type pants, because the, the pants were coming up, they didn't touch the bar. That's a little bit too OCD, but. So I'm coming here, and now what I'm doing is I'm taking my hands and I'm pushing my hips back, right? And you see this position here, I look like a, you know, not a catcher, but I'm kind of like catcher kind of gets down and then drops down. So the here's the position here. I go and I'm grabbing the bar. See my knees are out a little bit. And I'm tucking the elbows. Hands are open. Now I'm set. Everything is good to go, everything's tight. Now I'm pushing. Push and push. And with 135 pounds, it's super easy. Like if it's not good enough to make me straight, I'm, I'm, I'm coiled up nice and tight, and I'm not jerking. When I see that, oh, like that, it's just like, I'm gonna break something. Is the bar coming against your shins before you come That's a, it's a weird question. It's coming against your quads. It, it touches the quad, it, it touches the shin. Like a starting. No, so it doesn't touch the shin until after. So you see there's a little mark. Some guys have, when you see a drag up the shin, not good to see a lot, a lot with crossfitters, because then that's the total is drag. Now, it it, when I pull it, it touches the shin, and then it goes away. And the reason the bar is staying here, you want to get this one, you can watch. Right? John, on more regular shoes, it looks like it would start where the laces are. Yes, so if you He's pull, got the high top shoes, so like not quite, but like almost on the, the top of the foot. So if it's if, if what happens is if, if I'm if the bar's touching my shin, what happens is when I get set up in my position, the bar's behind me. Then as I pull, it's gonna swing forward. That's gonna pull my hips up. I mean it, the nuances of the deadlift are are, are fun. So like in the sense that you've got to find that right position. Everyone would be a little different. I find that like right now the bar is touching me, like by I need to be a little bit back, so that I, I like walk my feet back. So this is the position here. So when I wear long pants, it goes over my knee with a soft knee and it hangs on and touches the bar. So, but now I just do it by look, I feel. But now I come down and push. You see, it's I'm not I'm about a thumb distance away when I come in and get set up and grab the bar. But what happens is it's gonna it's gonna want to touch right around here, and it's not that the bar the bar goes in a straight line. Just my shin can't clear away from it quick enough. And then as I continue to push away, then my, my leg continues to come back. Right? So it looks like this. So watch. Just see how it just hits it. Boop. Boop. And then it, it pulls away. But it's because my knee is coming back as I'm pulling. Right? So it's boop. And here, push. That's dragging a little bit. A lot. But we don't really care if it's, if it's dragging on the shin. Okay, everyone's different, but if it's touching the shin, okay. If it doesn't touch the shin, okay. It's just, it's, it's, we just want to, the cue should be on the bar, don't let the bar swing. That makes sense. So, what you want to do is uh, get hand placement perfect so the bar doesn't want to swing. What that looks like is, so now everything's the same as last time. I'm pushing my heels back, I'm pushing my hips back, getting set in position, right? Grabbing the bar slightly outside my shoulders, shoulder width. But now here's where it's key. And my hands are open, but if you look at what I'm doing with my elbows, is I'm getting them set and I'm tucking them. So my so I'm tucking them, so my lat is pulling the bar, not my rear delt. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. By my lat pulling on the bar, it's it's loading, it's loading up my spine farther down on the mechanical advantage. So what that looks like is if I load up my rear delts, right, this, that's this right here, can you see the difference? Right, that's rear delt. Here's lap. Yeah, about here. It should be a significant difference. Yeah. All I'm doing is I'm just, it looks like I'm trying to work my elbows behind me, I'm not, I'm just trying to get my it's a hard thing to, to flex your lap without like doing a lat spread. You're trying to like load up the lat. We're just trying to feel the lat, engage the lat. So wait to sitting on the lat before you pull. It doesn't even look like you're trying to see the difference. How it's, it's, that's, that's what, that's the goal. For me, the deadlift, the goal is to make it look very efficient, make it look smooth. You're going to be lifting more weight, and the advantage of lifting more weight is you're burning more calories, you're, and, and you're, but you're working the muscles together. 
that's you know that's totally different than like what bodybuilders do, which is what I'm like their workout. Like, they're isolating muscle. Right? The goal is here is not isolate muscle. Get everybody to work together in a group, right? And that means that like your erectors are really never pulling against the weight. They're always isometrically driving against the weight. So and that's completely opposite of the sumo deadlift, which is a squat, right? That's going to be what you normally see. Uh, a lot of people do it, especially if they have short arms. And the reason why short arms on the deadlift, why I like this is because they're bent over and that, to get a high hip, they're bent over so far that they're beyond parallel. You can't come back from that unless you're free. This is not efficient. This is more efficient. So the problem with this is I'm taking my back completely out of it, and now I'm back into the, the issue with the squat is now everything's bending from my knees and my hips, right? So this is the position I have to stay as upright as possible. And deadlift like that, that's that's a similar deadlift, right? I have to try to switch my toes. But I need to be as upright as possible because the more I'm bent over, I'm taking away the advantage of this movement. Right? So the advantage is wide stance as upright as possible. And the movement is it's easy. It's easier. My thought process is, I've, never, I've seen plenty of people out of shape deadlifting you know, 180, 200 pounds. I, I've seen some really heavy, fit guys deadlifting 600, 700 pounds, right? So I'm not saying we should be all deadlifting 600 pounds doing that, uh, but lifting weight, it, lifting more weight, it, it has a far more uh, beneficial thermic response, meaning it's going to jack up metabolism. Like, Again, I, I said at the beginning, my training partner usually throws up. It's not because like we're, we're pushing, but it's the amount of damage we're doing. It's like no total workload for our workouts, like 60,000 pounds of total work. You know, one set of 10 reps of 300 pounds, 3,000 pounds of workout. You know, 315 for 10 reps. You know, 3,000 pounds, not multiple times. 20 sets like that. That's not the deal with 20 sets, but. So he's getting sick not because he's got worse, it's because it's, sick. it's a lot of damage on the body. And, and, it, and it just ramps up metabolism. I'm not saying we should all aim to you know, do that much more. But the, but the goal is lifting a little bit more weight in a, in a mechanical, efficient, a mechanically more efficient manner has a, has a, has a, ben, a significant benefit to health, wellness, you know, doing what we all want to do, which is you know, fit, lean, you know, and, and, and have a higher risk of you know, metabolic weight. So, and the thing with the open hand, Kind of go a little more in depth with that. The, the purpose is to make it so my me personally, so the grip is not the limiting factor for my for my deadlift, and I won't have to run out the straps. So I, I back when I was 18, I used to manage something in the city in Waterbury. I met a rock climber. He did all this crazy grip stuff. I was always shocked at how like all his stuff he did with grip was like you know just like this stuff you know, where he where he's just on his fingertips and. When I started training strongman, I remember that my grip was always going. You know, I would start on farmer's walk, right? And it would start here, right? So my, my hand is punching the ground. I always start here. And then I eventually get here. And then once I get here, now I'm able to hold it. And I'm like, ah, right? Then it rolls out. I'm like, well, if I'm starting here and it's rolling and I'm stopping it, and then all of a sudden I'm able to hold it, I'm like, why don't I just start in that position that I'm able to stop it at? It takes a lot of effort to stop the bar from pulling out. The farmer's not the right to it's pulling out. So what I do is, I start here. And that's the position I'm in, and it's very comfortable. Basically, my, my fingers are pointing the ground. And it says, this is a smaller lever than this. So, and now I do it. Chips.